Hello all and welcome to another video in my journey to 1 million gamer score series and the first month of 2021 is already done so it's time to bring you all of the gamer score that I got in January 2021. Now this video is 100% Xbox 360 gamer score. I've decided I want to hit my 360 backlog quite hard and I've done that. I've done that uh, this month so far and I hope to continue it this year but I, I am going to mix it up in other months so there will be some of the easy one completions sort of from here on here on going forward but as I say this month is all 360 and that was largely due to a select group of my friends having an Xbox 360 only gamer score competition because we know how easy some of the one stuff can get so I said you know let's 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 do this let's wrap the difficulty up a bit by saying just Xbox 360 now there's still some easy completions on the 360 but with the 360 those easy ones just take time they do take time, so you can't just get them quick, but you can get them easily. So there's a few of those to talk about. There's a couple that took a little bit more effort. But uh, yeah, let's go over to the games. Let's crack on. Let's move over to the games and talk about exactly what I've been playing. And I like to talk about them in chronological order. And I'm already prepared. Look, there we are. The month started. The year started with me playing My Horse and Me Too. I've had this game for nearly two years, and I've had it for two years in March. So I'd heard it was an easy completion. So I decided, yeah, let's pull the trigger on this one and, and do this one. There are a couple of tricky achievements in it. However, you do need to do two playthroughs of the game. So do an amateur playthrough first and then do a professional playthrough second. The good thing about doing the professional playthrough is you should have done everything in your amateur playthrough. So it's literally you can cut corners and not do mini events and not do that. You can literally groom your horse so that it can take part in the events. Do two events, groom your horse, do two events and so on. Now... Ranking it up to professional difficulty doesn't actually make it that much more difficult. So, you know, if you've learned everything and how to play the game in your first playthrough, the professional playthrough actually becomes easy. The tricky achievements were unlocking all the items because you have to find these little presents. They're white bo boxes with red ribbons. And two of them were very difficult or just weren't obvious where they were to start with. It turns out that one was in the stable in a dark corner, which you cannot actually physically see the present. So you need to walk into this corner and you'll hit it. That's in your grooming stable. So just walk into all dark corners that you see and eventually you will hit it. can't remember exactly which one it is. Sorry about that. The other present, because when you're in the training field, all, there's low scattered around. They're all clearly visible and you just have to yeah ride your horse over them. What I didn't realise is there was a one of the presents is in the maze mini game. There's an achievement tied to that maze mini game where you have to get out of it within a certain time. Which I I did that achievement first time, but I didn't realise there was a present in it, so I had to go back in it and find this present. And I actually had to. I ran out of time a couple of times, so it was about the third attempt I actually found this present and then got out. So, yep, there's one in there. So that just made that a tiny bit tricky. The only one, other one that I found a little bit hard was yeah that slalom game where you have to knock the ball through. The, the fences within a certain amount of time. That one I found just a little bit tricky. But apart from that, all of the others, not that difficult at all. You'll need to do that game twice because there's only eight foals per herd game. Don't have to do those within a certain time. You just have to do them. Uh, perfect score on all training events. So that's the amateur, intermediate and the expert training events. So don't don't think you've done the amateur ones and it should unlock. You need to do all of them. Just make sure you get your gold trophy. And I was going to say, finish the fun games 10 times. So re just remember that's there. I used the Bucking Bronco one because that one was quick. You could just, yeah, sort of survive 10 seconds and get yourself thrown off. But uh, yeah, there's the Labyrinth game, the maze game that I was talking about. Get out of that within 90 seconds. Fortunate to get that done. That's not difficult. Groom your horse 15 times. You'll, you'll nearly do that anyway. I, I worked out that when you groom your horse, I mean, there's like feed it, drink and give it water. But you just need to fill up your bar. So do all of the grooming events that are the quickest. Doesn't matter if you don't give your horse food, believe it or not. As long as you I think the water was quicker than giving it food, so I always gave it water, and that just filled up the bars, and then was meant you was able to compete. But apart from that, yeah, all of the, not difficult. Just it just means you have to do two playthroughs. The first one, because you're doing all these mini games and having to find all the presents and all that, that will take you. The first playthrough will take you about I don't know two about three hours ish, and then I was able to get the professional difficulty one done in about an hour and a half because I didn't have to do the mini games, didn't have to find the presents. I could literally just two events, make sure that. I unlock the next event by getting 
I didn't even have to get gold trophies. I think cut times I got silver and it still unlocked the next event for me. Just get through it. So yeah, it took me around about five hours, and I I would think that once you learn the mechanics, five to six hours is going to be a fair assessment on how long it will take the average person. Okay, so above that, I thought I'd play seen it box office smash. 860, I think that's a fair total. The, the last 250 of that is DLC, which I haven't purchased. I haven't got the base 1000. I'm missing, there's online achievements in it for for winning 10 games, winning one, being in one or something like that. It's three, three online achievements and, and I'm missing those because I did try looking for games, but the game server is still, I think it's still active. There's just no one playing it. So I think there's a couple that I haven't answered certain amount of questions right in. I think 60s films and Western films, but the questions just are hardly ever coming up to do with those two categories. So yeah, I might revisit at some point. I might uh, bug my boosting buddy to to help me out on that one at some point and uh, hopefully get that done. Talking about boosting buddy, SBKX helped him with a couple of online achievements on this. Or did he just help me? Or was it both? I think, it, no, it was both, both of us. So, yeah, got all these like, Xbox Live ones done. So, all of the others below were obviously done, look, at a very much earlier date by myself. But, yeah, win a championship race, Xbox Live. First championship or crew, Xbox Live. Win your first quick race and win a time attack. So, yeah, just did a bit of boosting and training achievements there and got, what, about 90G out of that game, I think, added to what I already had. DreamWork Carts. Wow, this one took like it was fun. This one, this this isn't a bad kart racer, and we'll get on to one later. But this one wasn't a bad kart racer. I think it it took me one probably the longest, longest roughly this month, with exception to something that happened in another game. We'll get to that later. So yeah, I reckon this probably good took a good twenty hours or so because of what you had to do. You have to find a load of DreamWorks symbols. You have to win a lot of cups i think on different speeds and things like that you have to win with every character there you go perform every character special move completed all four circuits in mirror mode yeah just a lot of these take take time finished all challenge races yeah 50 percent challenge races yeah there's a lot of stuff it just takes a lot of time and also with each character you have to yeah hit opponents hit three opponents with a single move i think some of them are five perhaps as well can't remember let's have a scroll down a bit yeah oh no it's three opponents each time if it was five, that would be tough. So yeah, every time you unlock it, each character has their own special move. You have to hit each. That one I was a little bit worried about. I was very fortunate to get that along the way. Obviously, just be aware that's there. And if you've got that power up and you see two people close to each other, go for it. But yeah, a quadruple stunt. Cross the finish line first. Yeah, some of these you just need to be aware of. I can't believe that one's rare. Block three attacks while maintaining first place. Again, yeah, you need the shield and just hope you get bombarded and things like that. But yeah, it's just things like this take take time. Complete all four, four circuits of 50cc and things like that. So yeah, it took a long time. Getting the DreamWorks symbols, there's a lot of them. Something like over over 70, I think it was. Some, the, some of them you just get for winning races, for winning championships. So you do need to come in first. And then there's a load that are hidden around the track as well. But I generally had actually, actually had fun with that one. That's not a bad little kart racer. It was well polished. And well balanced. We'll get to that later. So I don't know why there's no thumbnails to this one, but I like my beat em ups. I'm not a big fan of the Blast Blue series, but I thought I'd play the other one that I haven't played. Just was able to get a few achievements out of it. I don't know why it's written in another language. I is a power copy that I've got. That's weird. That's throwing me a little bit. Uh, that's throwing me a little bit. But there we go. That top one was the one that took a little bit of effort i had to basically get my turbo pad out you have to deal one million damage in training mode so i had to get my turbo pad out and do the old elastic band tricks and then go to bed so yeah i found a character with an advancing move and set set that up on on yeah on turbo so yeah that took probably that 190 took a couple of hours before i then did that leave my pad on boost overnight trick oh dear Hannah Montana, the movie, the game. Yes, I'd heard this one was an easy one as well. This was sitting in the backlogs. So I thought I'd get this done as well. Funny thing about this game, it's not the worst game I've ever played. It's just, it would be nice if it was reskinned by something that wasn't a little bit girly and a bit more manly. Perhaps like a turtle. If this was a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game, then yeah, I'd have a little bit more pride about this. But at the end of the day, you know is what it is you've got to do these things most of this stuff is progressional the mini games 
Oh, there is one warning on the mini games. Which mini game is it? the horse races game at the fair against three of your friends? Yes, three of your friends means you're gonna need four controllers for that one. Obviously, if you've got four controllers, use a guitar, use a set of drums, use a U-Draw tablet. I was fortunate enough that I do have four controllers. So I did have the guitar as well, and I did, you know, I, I had plenty available to me. The was the bottle toss game. Was it too bad? Which one was it? Which one was it? One of the game, yeah, the the, uh, the frog hop game isn't too bad. He's uh, maybe it was the bottle toss game. The one where yeah, you have to do sort of all ten little mini games in a row. That one could be a little bit difficult. But yeah, only one of the mini games was a bit tough and uh, left you raging a bit. Took a few attempts, but apart from that, f the getting five star ratings on all of the songs is not hard because obviously it's aimed at kids. There's progression ones like that. These ones will take a bit of time. I would advise, th don't worry about buying decorations for your clothes. Make sure you get this one first as you're playing through the game. Visit all the stores if it's got clothes available. Buy as many as different items as you can. I got to the end of the game and I hadn't bought a hundred, so I ended up. Uh, I had the I ended up trying to work out where I hadn't been, and I hadn't been to the gift shop at the fair, and I bought a load of items in there, and eventually it unlocked. And then when you go back to your your bus or your hub thing, you then just quickly throw one item, one sort of transfer on a, whatever piece of code, move on to the next, and do that, do that thirty times, and that will unlock. As a whole, it is an easy completion. I don't know, sixty hours, I think. Probably six to eight hours. I think it's a fair assessment of this one. Like I said, it's easy, but with 360 stuff, even easy takes time. So this is one of those occasions. But I can't believe I'm saying it, but it's not the worst game I have ever played. Kick-Ass 2. This is a non-UK PAL game. So it is PAL, but obviously it wasn't released in this country. I bought this off eBay for about 20 quid from a ebay user in spain i think but you'll get all of the achievements in this for playing through except for two which are collectibles the two collectibles ones are where are the wi-fi hotspots and cross out all the graffiti so 50 g's worth two achievements are collectibles i would advise that what i had i found someone on youtube that had done collectibles guides sort of per chapter so per each chapter and what i did is i watched that remembered where it was so that when i got to that section of the game i could go to it cross out the graffiti or use the wi-fi hotspot in question but apart from that every other achievement in this game is storyline progressional and cannot be missed the final boss was a bit of a pain in the ass mainly because he had about six minions with him but Minions is a bit harsh because two of the guys were fucking huge. So, yeah, that one's uh, it's going to be a little bit grindy more than tough. If you're used to your sort of your yeah your 3D scrolling beat 'em up games, then you'll be fine. The counter button is your friend is a massive piece of advice. Keep an eye on on opponents behind you while you're fighting someone else glowing red. Whack that counter button as soon as you see it. A lot of the time they were moving towards me and I was already hitting it. The combat, unfortunately, is a bit slow and sluggish in this. It's uh, it's It could have been more this game, I think, is the best assessment of that. But, you know, it was all right for what it was. Right above that, I, I've got nothing out of this game this month. My good friend Scott Glory Hunter, fellow YouTuber, didn't have the online for this one. And obviously, finding games online is hard. I think it's you don't even have to win. You just have to play 10. So it was just a case of, yeah, mate, I'll keep hitting, keep hitting buttons, knock yourself out. So, yeah, just helped him with that. It is an easy 400 should you have not got it before. So my boosting buddy helped me with split second. He got me a couple of achievements on this. Thanks again, Ross. Beat an opponent with an online form of 10 or better. Luckily enough for me, he's the bollocks at racing games and had that. Win an online race was obviously unlocked at the same time, and I, he had this viral achievement as well. So it was able to help me with 45 game game of score there out of split second that I didn't have. And split second is a great game, so I need to revisit that and try to get more out of that. Same applies to Blur. I need to revisit this and try and get more out of this. We tried to, he tried to help me with boosting online on this as well, but this game seems to be, and rightfully so because it's that good, still very active online. So we couldn't get ourselves in the situation that we wanted to be for me to to get a little bit of the boosting online done but never mind at world's end okay this game could have been again could have been so much more the cinematics in it are brilliant to watch by the way and that is unfortunately the highlight of the game combat in it is a little bit unrewarding because as you're fighting someone the others leave you alone 
But a lot of a lot I say a lot of the game is storyline progression. I just need a little bit of a memory jog here. Yeah, I had to go back and get that the the, the jackanisms because you have to get these three sort of glowing skulls, glowing green skulls of dead people to be able to use jackanism, and then you have to get next to the chest and activate it. And that one was missing. So, collect a hundred souls is an absolute ball lake that has to be done in one run. And that took me playing one level for about three hours to, to, to play safe and grind it out. Because there's one area in the sort of moat, sort of castly section, where two or three minions, easy characters come out. And yeah, beating those. And they will randomly drop one of those heads that's actually pictured in the thumbnail, but very randomly and few and far between. So I just played it safe and went back to that level. And yeah, just did it. But you're going to be really hard pushed to get the 100 souls in one playthrough, but 150G, it was worth doing that grinding for. Yeah, opening all the jackanism chests have a cheap, but there's just a lot of collectibles around as well that you need to find. Yeah, Calypso pieces and things like that. So again, I had a guide on the go so that I didn't miss any collectibles as I was playing around. It's, uh, yeah, it's not going to be... A all these unlock finishing moves, oh, they are basically storyline progressional. As you beat certain levels, they will unlock. But yeah, like Kirk's seven bottles of rum hidden in that level there. So yeah, so you just, just may need a guide again so that you just don't miss it as you're playing through. I'll say collectibles in games are a little bit of a little bit of a bugbear of mine, which I don't enjoy too much. I would say, yeah, certainly hit the double figures with this game. It's, it's, it's not awful as a completion if you follow the guide and are prepared to do that sort of, yeah... The, the skull grind thing honestly wow right uefa euro 2008 i just fancy playing an old football game one night one day so one night so I, I put this on got a few miscellaneous achievements in in a good couple of hours oh sorry about that in a good couple of hours like win a certain match which is basically replicating a match from the finals of euros past sort of thing and a couple in the is it captain your country mode yeah plays this fella uh, you have to earn your place, and then when you get to Portugal, hope you play. So you, you you can't sort of sim through the matches because he won't play well enough to be picked. So yeah, you need to play all the matches, all the friendlies, and play really well. So yeah, if there's any difficulty, so I put it down on easy. So there are several like that, which means you have to play that mode a lot, a lot. So th there's more I can get out of this. It's just going to take time, but in 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 a couple of hours, maybe somewhere between two and three hours, I was able to get one sixty out of it. Okay, Connect Sesame Street TV. I did this all in, I say in one sitting, it's a Connect game. It took me about 10 hours. There's, there's eight episodes. Yeah, it took me about 10 hours just, just through how long it takes more than anything. Uh, yeah, that, that's quite a funny one. You sat back, relax, and enjoyed an episode. So you have to start an episode, but not be inside the Connect. So I was like, oh, how do we do it? I literally press start on the thing and I, and, I, and I run out of the room. And then, you know, did some flat work. And then came back to it eventually after about 40 minutes of letting it play through. Elmo's World is what everything ends on. And you have to do something specific in each one. So you might need to, to actually look up a guide on what to do. Because it's not always clear. A lot of the stuff you're going to get naturally by playing through. Like, yeah, touch all the frogs in Elmo's World. Maybe I missed one or something. I had to go back to it. But the other thing is, you in some of the levels, you have to find 20 of something. And as you're watching the episode, they appear in the background. And to, to find them, can we find find any? Oh, yeah. Find all egg cartons in Humpty's Big Break. So they're in the background. And what you have to do is you have to shout picture and point at the connect sensor. Now, I thought it'd be simple because it's a kid's game. Turns out some of them are quite well hidden. So what I was doing, and I must have sounded like a nutter if anybody could hear me. Luckily enough, when I played it, there was nobody else in the flat. Basically, every time the picture changed or something moved into the picture, I was just shouting, picture and pointing. So there I am in my living room going, picture, 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 over and over again, so that I didn't miss any. And the funny thing about it is, when I did that one, I actually missed it and had to play again. And I was, and I don't know how or why that happened, but there we go. But apart from that, I did it in all the others and was, uh, yeah, was, was successful. A lot of the others are, yeah, you can't miss. But the Elmo's World ones are, are a specific thing which you may need to look up. And you might miss one of the items when you need to find the 20 items. So, yeah, just make sure you're shouting picture and pointing that sensor every time the picture changes or something moves into the scene. I think that was what caught me out in that one. Okay, Your Shape Fitness Evolved. 
yeah, did a little bit of a bit, bit of a naughty on this one. I didn't really burn the calories. So where was I up to? Where was I up to? As you can see, I did it on the 11th. And it's the first time I played it since uh, last year. So yeah, on the 11th, I got all of these. 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, and 10,000. Now, when I got the others, I worked out that I could just, just sit on the floor while I was watching YouTube videos on my phone, and it would give me a couple of hundred. I then thought, how the hell do I speed this up? So... Yeah, I got on TA and, and and had a little bit of a look. So I basically adjusted my weight to an you know an, an honest one and put it up as high as I could. So I was so potentially burning off more calories, and that helped. And it, yeah, I was suddenly it was doubling the amount. But what happened after that? I don't know how I discovered it. I, I soon realised that I've got this black and red chair, and I put it in the square of where the connect sensor was. And it was registering it as doing an exercise, and it was flying up, uh, and I was getting a nice chunk every time. So all I did was keep restarting it with this chair in the connect sensor square. So going to be honest, dishonestly, earned. I think there are other methods which I I heard some people have put a fan, an oscillating fan, in it as well, and that that picks up the movement of the fan and registers it as a person as well. So there are ways to cheat it. Probably could do using it on lockdown. Game party in motion. So yeah, I got all that in 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 a couple of hours in, in one sitting. The other ones that I am missing are rock hard. I can't believe some of these are, are as low as they are because winning games you just again just keep playing. Eventually you'll get it right. Some of the uh, extra stuff you have to do, like three perfect hits in smack control, that wasn't tough at all. In fact, that one's not even rare. You, some you just need to be there aware of, like three hundred or more in beer tapper, and then a lot of the, again win it. Get a ring and horse. Keep playing enough, you'll eventually you'll get a ringer. Uh, winning it, the uh, thing that might have took me two two attempts, 150 points in the quarterback motion. Once you learn how to what that's all about, a couple of attempts of that one. This one took a while, but I was determined to get it. Score two bags in the hole, in bag toss in a single round. Not in a, unfortunately, it's not in a single game. It literally is a single round. So when you're throwing your is it four, three or four bags, two of them have to go in. So yeah, a lot of practice with keeping my arm movement the same. And the power, and eventually I got it done. I think I got the two by having one on the edge, and then when I threw another one, it went in the hole and dragged the other one down with it. Win at bag toss. Uh, anyway, so a lot of them are winning and doing certain things which you can work on, and and get like get a bullseye. And keep playing. Eventually, you let, you let that bullseye. I started with darts because I like my darts, but these ones I just could not do. Shout out your opponent in table hockey, bocce ball, double rackets, and that is rock hard. That one I can't believe actually that is a little bit higher. Yeah. They, they, they're going to be. I nearly did. I think it was the bocce ball one twice and got close. I got to like. Because you have to get to 21 points to win. So win 21 nil. I got to 17 points once and I think it was 18 points once. Might be 19. Honestly, I got so close and that was it. Yep. So I got close. I could possibly go back and, and get that one done. But the others, I, I wasn't able to. But uh, as you'll see from the. All below 1%. So that's how hard they are to get. But I, I did what I was going to say. I played it for, a, I said a couple of hours, but to be honest, yeah, it was more like four, three or four hours one night. I was able to get a lot of it done, as you'll see. I had a lot of fun doing it as well. And a lot of fun doing it applies to Rise of Nightmares as well. I knew I wouldn't get the completion on this, but I just, I wanted to play through this. I did I wanted to do a campaign playthrough of this. And then I did a little bit of mopping up afterwards. And there's still a few more I could mop up if I revisit it at a later date. So where have we got to? Yes. There we go. We got to there, and that was everything on a playthrough, clearing all the acts. So I just did it on a normal difficulty. There you go. Humane difficulty. I didn't do it on insane or anything like that. And then I just did a bit of mopping up afterwards. I didn't realise that when you when you open a door, you sort of push you could, you push it open, you know, throw your hands out. I didn't realise you can actually kick them as well, and that's an achievement, a 5G or so. That was one I mopped up. And then just I was defeating creatures in certain ways, and obviously I hadn't got to 500. Did that in my mop-up. So, yeah, I had to mop up with a knife, with us off, weapons dropped by creatures. Wep Some creatures have arms sort of built into them as weapons. So when you defeat them, they drop their ar their arm sort of stays on the floor, and you can pick it up and use it as a weapon. Creatures using punches and kicks with a spear trap. There's a level where you're in a room and the spear traps are everywhere, and you have to sort of wheel your way around it. And then the other zombies will just walk at you, so you can get them to walk at you and over spear trap and it'll kill them. So I just went back to that level because you can chapter and scene select. So I went back to that level and just did that until that one pops. And then 50 creatures using test tubes, pipe like weapons, and explosives. So, explosives, so again, I found a level where there's an explosive barrel 
at the side and then when you punch it it explodes and any zombies near it will die you'll take a little bit of damage but if you're not, it won't kill you so yeah rinse and repeat on that there's still a couple of other grindy achievements that i can do killing things in certain ways but yeah i, I was quite happy with that so I, I was just wanted to play through that one played a bit of spongebob surf and skate road trip the oh connect detection on this is horrendous uh, there's still more i can get out of this the xp leveling up on this is very generous i am over i think 45 because that was an achievement yeah xp 45 there's one for 55 as well but it's generous at giving out xp so i can definitely get that one but uh, yeah a lot of it yeah it's just again i'm just playing the game and not really aiming at anything in you know in in particular or specifically as i tried to say there but yeah not great not great detection which kind of ruins the game a little bit but uh, as i say there's a few of these I can go back and get, but it's that one there which I know I can go back and get. Because as I say, the XP is generous, and I might be able to pick up a couple of these other ones. Just need to go back to it. It was a, I finished playing that at a time. As you see, I went on a bit of Connect streak there. To play Connect games in the living room with my flat, I do need to do a bit of furniture moving around. And yeah, I'd, I'd left the furniture out of the way for a couple of days, basically, and then I put it all back and that was it that was my connect done for the month picture ultimate edition you need to use your tablet for this you need a lot of time and patience because you're basically playing a game which is meant for 100 percent for two people to share a you draw tablet with and i was playing it on my own and yeah play through everything on it met all the requirements on it some th require you to do certain things in certain ways we'll have a quick nip into it where are we completed mania mode and there's yeah didn't have time blind yeah these ones here there's sort of things you can alter the way you play like that one that you can only draw in dots and you have to win 10 games with that mo uh, with that sort of modifier active so yeah just read the achievements play the modifiers again just, you can go into a quick one match mode and yeah it's just a lot of grinding on your own playing a game that's designed for two i think what the last one i get was landing landing on a specific square to yeah master the mega mania square because that only appears up in levels like three or four times and obviously then it's luck based landing on it so that one took a long time and that's probably why it's the rarest i think it's the rarest achievement in the game and then you have to play 50 games as well something like that so i went back to the single player mode and just did those as quickly as i could timed games i think anyway move on move on ncis the game this is not tough at all the best way to describe this game is if you played the cis games it's like that but linear in the csi games you have to work out where to go what to do what clues to sort of work out what little mini you know units to help you find clues to use this one holds your hand through it you move to the rooms with you know uh, things glow that you need to do it literally does hold your hand you can sit through it i think it i think it might have taken me around about five to six hours to get it all done i did it all in one sitting yeah it took me about yeah took me about that perhaps a little bit longer if you want to play safe but it holds your hand and everything in it is pretty much everything no not pretty much everything in it is is progressional so not difficult just yeah just got to sit through it and to be honest with you it wasn't the worst game it wasn't the worst game I've ever played I, for what it was i'll go as far as to say i kind of enjoyed it okay nothing to add here i've already had that do a series on my channel called Fighting with Five Lives. Up, I did Streets of Rage 2 and I used my 360 version on the Ultimate Mega Drive collection to get it. But just a quick one I'll throw out there. It's not a tough completion. You will need two controllers for one one achievement, which is, is something to do with Sonic 2. Apart from that, not difficult at all. So I've got The Walking Dead and The Walking Dead Season 2 on disc. The disc versions that they sell, unlike the Batman one, are the full game. I say the full game, 100% Season 2 is the full game. Five, I was going to say, as you'll see, there's only 500G available in it. That's 100G per chapter. With The Walking Dead, there is DLC for a further 100 on that called the 400 Days DLC. That, obviously, is you'll have to buy. That's not on the disc. So there's 500 on the disc. I decided to spend the £3.99 and get the completion. It was it's still available on the store at time of obviously recording this so yep yeah, 400 days does have miss all of the other achievements in both games you can't miss anything so store on a progression of the 400 days does have two missable achievements should you decide to purchase it when you play white's chapter you will need to win the rock paper scissors games that's best of three so obviously two out of three you'll need to win and there's an achievement in russell's chapter where 
right at the beginning, a car's driving towards you on the road. It gives you the option to hide or not. You must pick hide, and then you'll get familiar face achievement. Because as you dive down, there's a dead zombie on the floor from a previous episode in the game. So a couple of missable. Apart from that, play for all of those as well, and then you'll get your 100 100%. I was going to say the base 100 is on the disc. The DLC obviously isn't, and you only spend a four quid on. Okay, TMNT, Nickelodeon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's the, the second Turtles game that's really easy on the 360. You will need to play through the main campaign to unlock everything that you need. You'll need to upgrade all of your turtles. I would suggest focusing on one turtle and upgrading them to the max because you can switch between the four turtles as you're playing through, but it is so easy you will not need to. I use Leonardo and upgraded him first. As I say, keep going back out and upgrading the turtles as you're progressing along because upgrading each one to the max is an achievement. In all the stuff you have to do, you should get it all as you're playing along. But as I say, focus on the one that you're going to use and then sort of top up the other three sort of balanced out because I suppose that it does affect them even though you aren't them. So yeah, you get a lot of your achievements for playing through the main campaign. There are collectibles on it called Mutagen, but every time you are near one, it hums. I didn't need a guide because of that. The other one is, uh, what are they called? Forget what they're called. You need to basically find these things and hack them. Where are they? Mikey is upgrade. See, this is what I'm talking about. Graph, complete environment. So, Attack two. There's the mutagen canisters, and then the air. Yeah, 100% of the secrets, and these secrets are panels on the wall. Uh, again, they make noises when you're nearby as well. Should you miss anything, there is a level select, and it will tell you how many out of how many you found or not found, and then obviously you can revisit there. But apart from that, you will need after you play through your main campaign, you will then need to play through the game a second time on time attack, and then you'll need to do certain things in survival mode as well. None of them are difficult. It is just a bit of a grind. It's easy, but expect to take anywhere around about 10 to 12 hours, I would say. Blood buff. Oh dear, blood buff. Do I have a story to tell about blood buff and what it did to me? Right. This is another power game, but it's a non-UK power game. I bought off that same spell. I got kick-ass off at the same time, funnily enough. Again, cost me around about 20 quid. It's an arena fighter, which is largely influenced by being an online game, but you will still play a game even if other people aren't there. The achievements, winning in each mode. So once you get the mechanics of the game sort of worked out, you, you won't struggle with it. And there's a lot of it. Like winning each type of game and ranking up. They're pretty much most of your achievements. The other one, 100 kills, 100 takedowns. You need, once you learn how to do a takedown and a power hits, they're not tough to do. Your real grind is getting to level 25. And I did look up on TA for that specific achievement there, a way to boost it. And it was working. It was getting me there faster, still taking a long time. Once you get 15, it slows down. Once you get past 20, it really slows down. Basically, in my first night, it got late. And I got up to 16 and I called it a night. I went back to it the next morning and thought, right, let's, let's, let's get this done. Let's grind this out in the morning and get this done. I got to level 19, nearly to level 20, and the game crashed. Reloaded up the game. Lost all my progress. Basically, it crashed on an autosave screen by the looks of it, and I'd lost all my progress. And, yep, I had to sit through it all and do it again. And I did that. I spent 10 hours of my day getting that. I was like, you're not beating me. I know I can get the completion of this. You're not beating me. But if you don't have a glitch, it won't take you an entire day. It will take you about 10 to 12 hours just because of that these these ranking up ones just taking a long time as i say make sure you go online make sure you pick ranks don't worry if no other humans are online you will play with all ai which is exactly what happened to me but very long game very long game play a little bit of frogger a little bit of frogger missing three achievements on this one the rest aren't too bad to do a little bit of practice some of them just need to be aware of that are there five lady frogs are purple frogs that are on a log three bugs are the ones that sort of hov stay in the hole for a little bit where you have to put the frogs and hopefully you'll get three in a game deliver 15 frogs to the home without dying once so getting to level three without dying i it took me a while but i got there and uh, level three there we go probably got them at the same time actually because I, as soon as I died, I just started again because I knew that achievement existed. I am missing level four and level five. If the difficulty really ranks up. My boosting buddy, we did have a go at this, but we got very frustrated and was unable to get it done. That basically involves you both getting to level four and probably both of you finishing level four. Very hard to do, as you'll see by the fact it's got a low unlock rate for just getting there, even on your own. 
So for two of you to do it at the same time, it's not going to be easy. Right, Night in the Museum. Yes, Night in the Museum. Quite a fun game, actually. I really enjoyed this. You can probably get this done quite quickly. It's a bit of a collectibles-a-thon. There's a lot of collectibles in each museum. A specific item so many times in each museum. Pressing a penny, which means you have to find a penny to press and four quarters to use the machine. Then you have to find the machine and then do it. Those ones I was able to find every time and not miss. So that wasn't too bad. I did miss a couple of the collect. I didn't use a guide. I did miss a couple of the collectibles in a couple of the levels. But once you've completed the game, a lot of it is, you'll get a lot of achievements for storyline progression. There are a couple of other random things. Once you complete the game, it will tell you where if you've got your stats page on every museum when you go to revisit it. So if you've got if you're missing in a collectible on one stage, it will say you've got 9 out of 10. You know what I mean? It will do that. You do also need to fill up your awards room for an achievement. And your awards room is basically finishing every mission in every level. Some of the little missions aren't actually things that you have to do to finish to actually get past the level. Like this one here. To complete the Trilobite puzzle in the National Museum of History. That was one of the, the task missions or quests or whatever they call it that I was missing. So I, I went back to the museum. That one was actually... A little bit more hidden. The, the other one that I missed again had an achievement tied to it, which gave the gum to Stonehead. That actually is a little mission as well. But it will tell you again on that page when you revisit the mission, it will say missions you have done, I don't know, 12 out of 13. A lot of them are just natural progression, some of them are optional. There was a couple that I just ended up stumbling across and doing, but those two I missed. But as again, as I say, it tells you on the level select thing once you've done the game. Bought Minecraft Story Mode. Uh, you can buy just the season past this, but there is a complete edition, and I bought the complete edition and played through all eight chapters again, each one taking around about two to three hours. Some were quite near the two mark, some were quite near the three mark. As I say, there are eight chapters of those, so, yep, expect to put around about, I suppose, 20 hours total in this. So I've done it sort of over a, a couple of nights, sort of stretched out. But, yeah, another Telltale game, you know, pretty much... Hold, I say hold your hand. There are a couple of moments actually where you, where you with a missable achievement. So we're just going to pop in because I did did one of those laugh. Yeah, attempt to craft a lever at the crafting table right at the very beginning where it asks you to craft the sword, which which I can't remember the, what you have to do on the craft table for that. But you're given some sticks and some stones. If you put one stone at bottom middle with a stick above it it makes a lever and that's not what you're meant to make and then you'll get that achievement at once missable but a lot of it's playing through the story modes the one that i decided to go for there is i think it's end of chapter two you get to choose who to go with there's an achievement for going each path so you can either do what i did once i finished that chapter i just went back and revisited it you can re revisit chapters after you finish them i did it straight away you can wait till the end and then go back and refresh it and revisit it if you want to but yeah each path there are missable achievements in that, but it's not tough. It'll just take a long time to do. Okay, Madoka. Oh, damn game. Damn game. I am For me, it's as good as a completion. I just need someone to play co-op with me. Because the two that I'm missing, I was able to do that on my own. Collect 10 hours, 10 hour glasses, one multiplayer checkpoint race. But I could not get the other two, which I'm definitely going to need help with down here. All the way to the bottom. 25 and 40. You have to do it each and you, you need two people playing to keep the time topped up enough for you to be able to do it. I can You can just sneak 10 on Shrek Swamp playing on your own. Literally do 10 with one controller, quickly pick up the others, and you can just about get to 10 with the other controller. So I was able to do that on my own, but yeah. Apart from that, a lot of it is easy. A lot of it is easy. Winning races with certain characters, three stunt combo, all this sort of stuff. So we'll go up to the top because we can, we, we can find the ones that I struggle with there a little bit. 200 cc is a little bit annoying it's all of a sudden becomes very cheap and unfair you may i the, yeah each each cup has three races and then there are only three cups so you think it ain't going to take you long but the middle cup on the 200 cc really kicks my ass quite a lot apart from that it was all right you have to play different modes and things like that like say look hourglasses on your own not a problem but yeah Prepare for some frustration with that one. Again, that one, because of the Shrek Swamp time trial as well, that one kicked my ass a bit. And that one is literally very unforgiving with time. All the time trials, they're not too bad, with the exception of a couple. I think it was the very first one, the very last one I did, ironically. But yeah, cut time tri trials will leave you very close every time you attempt it. Shrek Swamp, yeah, damn you. Top Spin 2. Again, Boosting Buddy came to my aid here. We just, I decided uh, to look at the achievements for this one. 
because I knew there weren't many achievements in the game. See, see how easy they were. And then I discovered that there was three online ones in it. Look, defeat an opponent, 25, win 25, and play 50. So it's perfect for boosting because you win 25 each, you play 50, you win 25, you get your two achievements done, plus you win one as well. So that took... Well, it, was, it looked like it was going to take a very long time, and then we soon realised that whoever was going to get the win, if the other person just simply forfeits the game after you start it, it will count as a win and a match played. So all of a sudden looking like what was going to take hours, took around about an hour after he did that. We played safe, me and Ross, my boosting buddy, and made sure the person who was going to win got one point, just in case. I don't think you needed to do that, but we just wanted to play doubly safe. So, yeah, spent an hour grinding that out and getting the online ones done so the completion is there to be able to get done at a later date. I think it will take a long time because this career mode looks like it ain't, it ain't going to be quick. An entire career mode with more than 1,000 points get to number one and entire you look at the low unlock rate of that just would just suggest it's going to take a long time i have played a little bit of it i've won a match but i haven't won a tournament yet you really do need to upgrade your player after you create one because it's a create player you use and yeah that's what's going to take time to get the upgrading done these these are difficult but they are for some reason they are rare there are 12 of each I say each, there are 12 male pro players, there are 12 female pro players, a 75G achievement for beating all male pro pro and all female pro, one one for each. And you can put it down to one set, two games, you have to win by two clears, so you may go to a tiebreaker. Holding my serve was never a problem, sometimes I wouldn't hold my, you know, I wouldn't break serve and then we'd go to a tiebreaker or I'd hold my serve and then beat the one to take it away from a tiebreaker and, and, and so on. But have it on easy as well. And just set it to two games, one set. Work your way through it. I I would say each of those achievements alone is going to take around about the hour mark. But a 75G for an hour's work is not the worst. I've I've played played longer for less, specifically for one achievement in the past. So those I just decided to knock those out in in one session each, basically quickly. I even streamed one. Okay, well, I think we're getting near the end. We're getting into that. Do you know I'm not going to re- dib, dabble too much into that one couple of hours of Tetris and I got 120G out of it by playing around with certain different modes. There's work to be done on that one. I'll probably touch on that one deeper in a later video. F1, currently boosting some achievements on that that I'm missing. I had most of that. I think I picked up a couple of that. Uh, I think I've got 35G more. A little bit of boosting is being done on that at the moment. The next achievement we're going for is going to take a while, but we will get there. Toy Story Mania, I streamed the entirety of this. I was only going to do an hour, and I streamed the entirety of this. You can find I've unlisted it, but you can still find the stream in the streams playlist. And I bought it because I like Toy Story, and I was going to do an hour. But then I realised, you know what? If I'm going to play longer than an hour without a break, why stop the stream? So I didn't. I didn't stop the stream. I carried on going. Uh, so it took me just over four hours. The stream was four hours and fifteen minutes long. It is not difficult. It's not actually difficult. I didn't realise it was this easy. Each but I went into the sort of sort of the area where you could pick the booze but you had to unlock the next one each mini game has its own achievement you just need to be aware of what it was i mean in that stream you can see me going right breakout assault is next what do i need to do hit 20 different balls in block break right okay that's what i've got to do before every achievement before i attempted every mini puzzle i learned what to do a lot of them were very easy it's just a couple of them i had my boosting buddy watching me and he very kindly looked up these two here for me they weren't all too clear what to do so i had to go back and do those ones so you have to beat one to unlock the next one and as i say each one has a 20g achievement tied to it so but most of them aren't tough you just need to know what to do here so you may need to look those up and then play through the booth a booth any booth in adventure mode with a friend that will take i don't know about 20 minutes on its own i think it took i can't remember you know, you just need a second controller. The other controller doesn't have to do anything. When you start up the very first mini game, make sure the other controller is on and then hit A to join straight away. I was worried that it might not register that, but it did. And yeah, just just had to play through it. Just had to play through it. And credits, completion. They are in the settings. Uh, you'll find watch credits. Just do that. Credits are only about two, three minutes long. Easy 20G achievement there. Easy completion, as I say. I don't know the exact time on this one. Four hours, 15 minutes. Perhaps you do a bit of a research on it and you may be able to streamline it and get some more done and perhaps do it in under four hours. But yeah, not, not tough at all. Adventure Time. Is that Finn and Jake Investigate? Something like that. This is a point and click adventure with some random combat scenes as well. That's 
I used a text guide which I found online. If you don't use a text guide, like literally, I read the line, I knew exactly what to do. Go, go top right, pick up this item, mix this item with this item. I'd advise watching the, the there are a couple of tutorials early on. I'd advise watching those just so you know what to do. There are a few missable achievements in the game. You need to find all these snails as you play through, but if you follow that a text guide like I did with all achievements, it said snail one and where it roughly it was um, when you were in the right place as well. You also can miss an achievement for listening to the radio a certain amount of times or all the different messages. Before you press the ticker tape to start an adventure, make sure you go upstairs in the treehouse to your room and listen to the radio three times at least and then hit the ticker tape to move on it because you cannot go back. And the, the horrible thing about this game is if you miss anything, there is no level select. You have to play for the entirety of the game again. When you get to the very last question make sure you select the answer the emotions as i said it was in that guide for me because if you don't get that question right first time there's a cheap for getting that question right first time and you'll have to play through the entirety of the game again as i say the combat sequences aren't hard make sure you use all of jake's attacks when you play through it you'll need to get 15 hit combo but that's not tough at one point i nearly got 100 so that's not tough as well so follow a text guide and you'll get this one done i would say it's a couple of hours per episode so around about 10 hour mark if you're using a guide. If you're not, honestly, it's going to be a hell of a lot longer. And then finally, I decided to play NBA Live 07. And that's, although that's not a completion, it kind of is a completion because the others are now unobtainable. Just just looked up what to do on these. The trick was, and I and I did use xboxachievements.com for this one. The trick was, was to create your own player, put all his stats up to 99. He would have all the level 3 moves available to him then. And then it's just a case of doing them in-game. I learned that you can do it in two-player games. So, and I say that because you have to go in the zone to to get these ones, obviously, in the zone for each type of move performed. But to get in the zone, I think you have to score anywhere between 8 to 12 points unanswered. So you're doing it two-player mode, the other person isn't going to score points. So I, I used that. I did actually get those against the computer in short matches. But I couldn't get in the zone. Even, even on easy, they were scoring points. So did that. And then finally, finish a game with four players. So, yeah, get the four controllers out again for this one. Set up a match. Turn the shot clock off. Make sure you're in the scoring half with the attacking team so you don't get a violation. Just let them stand there. Make sure you score two points. Out, otherwise, it'll go into overtime. I quickly learned that one. <laughs> quickly learned that one. I was like, yeah, what, uh, what are we doing? No achievement? Why are we carrying on? Yeah, okay. Okay, play for your four quarters, put the time down as low as you can. And as I say, just remember to score a couple of points so they're going to overtime. Achievement will unlock as long as none of your controller batteries die. 6.50 for a couple of hours work, which I didn't think was too shabby. So, ladies and gentlemen, wow, that was a lot. That was a lot. That was quite, this is quite a long video. Sorry about that, but uh, 360 stuff does need a little bit more explanation. But yes, I hope to get a lot more 360 stuff going forward. There will be more one stuff going forward as well. I will mix it up, but we was having a competition, so I focused on the 360 stuff, and I really went for it. I hope to get a lot more 360 stuff done this year, hit the backlog. A lot of the games, I'll be getting as much as I can out of it by just playing through so I can get the game done and experience the game. But obviously, if I can get an achievement, I will always target it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this just leaves me to say, I think, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, thumbs up always helps. Subscribe if you're new and all that jazz. Again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, please do take care.